Hello and welcome to the 46th video in the series programming a chess engine in JavaScript. So before I get going with the code here, a quick word to the series in general uh, in response to a couple of comments. This is not a series on how to program perfect JavaScript, obviously, and I expect if you're a JavaScript expert you're already probably horrified by the standard of the code, but hey, I'm not a JavaScript expert in any way, my background is C. Um, but the point of this series is to talk about what hopefully is the interesting part, which is the algorithms to make the artificial intelligence of a working chess engine. This is not an example of how to program a perfect program in a wonderfully object-orientated, fully extensible design pattern, whatever your university professor told you three weeks ago way. Um, I'm hoping to contribute and interest people in the, the hobby of artificial intelligence programming, which I really like, and therefore I find it a little odd sometimes when they get comments or private messages offering to send me code of how things could be done better. Um, I've got plenty of programs at home which are done in a much better way, but this is simply like most tutorials on YouTube, a quick and dirty way of showing you how things work with the concepts being more important than the actual code. So now that's off my chest, hopefully it's understood because I've said it quite a few times in the videos in the series, um, we can get on with this video. So I want to get quite far in this video because I want to actually get to the stage where in the next video we can show the engine or I can show the engine searching. So that means a little bit of copy and paste in this one to speed things up. So where we're starting first is at the bottom of the alpha beta function. And the first thing we need to do in here, you remember the last video we looked at creating the PV table. So I want to now store the best move using our store PV move inside this table. So we'll just drop that, that in here now. And the next thing we need to look at doing, although I've deleted the comment already from, uh, from here, is we need to add in our detection of whether we're mated or not. Before we do that, we need to add something actually up further up in the function, and it's here. We need to add a line in, and it's very similar to the line at the end of the make move. You remember at the end of make move we have this here. Are we in check? Well, we're adding exactly the same thing in here, in the alpha beta. We're just going to say, is our king attacked by the opposing side? Because if it is, then we're in check. So what we'll be saying is it is, is if in check, then, and I'm already typing, never mind, equals bool.true, then we're going to increment the depth. And the reason we're going to increment the depth is because if you think about the search tree and say you're searching to depth 5 and you find a line where you're in check and you don't increment the depth, then one, sequences of checks often lead to a mate and two, the number of moves to get out of check is usually extremely limited and if you can't get out of check you're mated anyway. So you might as well increase the depth by one because you're not going to increase the search tree nodes much to that given depth but you could miss a mating line. So there's, I don't think there's a single chess engine's code I've ever seen that doesn't have an incrementing of the depth when in check. So that at least that means you find a mate along forcing lines of check, even if the depth is 20 odd moves deep. So now we've done that, and we've got the in check here, we can actually go down to the bottom of the alpha beta again. And remember we have the move loop here, where we increment our legal every time we have a legal move. Well now we know that if legal is zero, we didn't find a move inside the move loop, which means either we're checkmated or it's stalemate. So we said if legal zero, are we in check? And if our in check equals bool dot true, so we are in check, then what we're going to return is our minus mate, because we're being mated of course, which is bad for us, but plus the play. And the reason for this is this tells us the distance to mate from the root. So say we've gone four moves in and we were checkmated, then the score would be no longer minus mate, it would be minus mate plus four, which means at the root we're saying it's mate in four. So we can work out very quickly at the root that if the score is a mate score, because our mate score is a long, long way from anything we could get the evaluation. So I don't know, if we say if the score is less than minus mate plus 100, let's say, or max depth would be the correct way to do it, then we know it's a mate score and we simply need to subtract one from the other to find out how many moves it was to get to mate inside the tree. So this returns, say, a mate in four in the example I was just talking. But if we're not in check, then it must be a stalemate, which we return a draw score of zero. 
Okay, the next thing we need to add, and you've seen probably down here already, I've added the definition for it already, is we need to add, add something in called a clear for search. And here we're going to clear everything up to actually start our search. And to do that, the first, uh, and I'll implement this copying in the code, and there are going to be bits in here we haven't implemented yet, but we'll come to them inside board.js. Like I said, I hope this isn't too quick, but I want to get through this and get around to actually getting the engine searching. So we've got two simple leaps here. One of them is clearing up our history index. So this will be our history heuristic, which is what gets incremented every time a move improves alpha, and it's a non-capture move. And then here are our killers, and our killer array, remember, is where we store a move, again if it's a non-capture move, and it's beaten beta. And I've seen here actually in the array I'm storing uh, three killer moves in the array, but the way these are indexed is piece to square, so we're going to take the two square and the piece type, and this is simply indexed by ply, and then the move is stored there, and we store three of them. So you'll see how that works when we come to store the move. And obviously these don't exist yet in our game board. We're going to add these in shortly when I've finished with this clear for search. The next thing we want to do when we're clearing for our search is actually clear our PV table to take all the moves out. And again, this will be implemented very shortly when we finish this function. And the last but not least is we simply want to reset our game board apply to zero because we're starting a search and now I just want to take a few things from here so we want the nodes the fail height and the fail high first to be reset to zero as well inside this object here so I'm just going to put a zero in here like this and we'll also say that our search start is now equal to the current time. So we'll use the jQuery now again here. And we can also say then that our search dot stop flag now equals false because we're not stopped from searching indeed, we're just starting. So that's the clear for search now implemented. And we need to drop our clear for search down inside our search position. And now I want to implement this clear for search and I'm going to put it right at the top of search.js below the search controller dot, um, sorry, the clear PV table. And I'm going to put it right at the top there just below the search controller dot thinking. And it's a very simple function through all of our PV entries and we essentially do what we do when we initialize the PV table in the main and that's simply set these to the move to no move and the position key back to zero. Okay, so the last thing to do then inside here now is just inside our board.js down here is to drop in our history heuristic. So our search history and we're going to define this then as our new array and it's of size and it's from indexed by the piece and then the square. So the size and then the board square number. And then the other thing we want to do is our game board and then our search killers. And like I said, you'll see how these work later on with the move ordering. And we'll do three times max depth. Okay, so that's the program now in a condition, barring lots of typos, which are probably in there, to actually search and give us a best move. So what we're going to do in the next video then is is add in a cup the alpha beta search obviously here add something in to store the best move that we found with each depth and we'll fix the search to go to a certain depth and actually have a look at the program searching and I said three or four videos ago that I've implemented all of this code now because it's all sort of connected with it. each function I've implemented last few videos connected with each other I haven't done a typo check on this and because I can't sort of compile like in C I imagine there are lots of small errors in here what I'm going to do now between this and the next video is actually implement the search code in here in search position and make sure everything works and then I'll correct the errors at the start of 
the next videos I'm sure there are, as I'm sure there are some. So thanks very much for watching. Hope it makes sense and comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.